So today I'm going to be running through how to install and set up Digisho on your Android device and show you why it's one of the best emulation front ends if you are emulating on Android. If you're new here, it would make my day if you dropped a like, maybe even subscribed because I have plenty of other videos that might interest you. Now let's get straight into the setup guide. I apologize for the lighting. Uh, I used to have two lights. This one's working and the one on this side went out, so I'm going to have to fix that soon. But first things first, Digisho, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. You can get it straight from the Google Play Store. All Digisho is, is it's essentially a emulator front end, which takes all of your games and puts them onto a console-like interface, um, basically similar to Xbox or PlayStation. You still have to provide your own ROMs and games and stuff like that, but this just makes it a lot easier to play your games uh, in a more organized way. So since this is a front end, it doesn't explicitly have emulators inside of it, you still have to um, download the emulators, which I'll get to in a minute. So this is just a cheap Motorola that I actually used to use as a camera for this channel and I replaced it. I bought this phone for about $40, so if you want to make your own sort of handheld like I'm going to be doing here, um, this phone's about $40 and this handheld controller was I think like $25. This Moto G Stylus should be able to run pretty much everything retro, however newer stuff um, like switch emulation definitely won't work. I have this on the charger right now, however this Bluetooth controller is paired. So this is what Digisho looks like when you open it for the first time. So what it's asking you to do right here is download the systems that you're going to want to play or basically the ones that you want to have in your options. So if you're not going to be playing Game Boy, I wouldn't put Game Boy there because it'll just be there empty. So you just hit download platforms. Personally, I'm going to be putting NES and SNES on here, so so there's the SNES, and then there's the NES right there. And then once you have all of the consoles that you want, just hit import. So like I said, the entire purpose of this is to have a console-like experience. It automatically scrapes for images pertaining to what you have installed. So see, it just brought up a picture of NES, and when I scroll to the side to SNES, there we go, it already downloaded a picture of that. And as you install your games, it automatically downloads and matches pictures for the games. And it does all that automatically, which is the best part about Deji Show. Then right off the bat, let's just go to settings, and then you can mess with the wallpapers and things like that. So let's put on dark theme, like so. As you can see now, it's in dark mode. And then you can download like these wallpaper packs that sort of have everything uh, laid out and ready in one pack. So let's just go ahead and pick one. Let's just try clean colors. And download pack. Confirm. So now when we go back, obviously it looks a little different now. It's using different images. And you can go between them and pick the one that you want. So you can see down here we have NES and SNES. So we have our two systems that I imported or however many you may have and no games so let's get some games on you so we have another little controller now but in order to actually add your roms as you can see we have zero things for super nintendo and if we go to nes we have nothing as well let's just start with the super nintendo you go to paths and you hit add and then you hit add more and then navigate to where you have your roms at for me i have it on my sd card but it's wherever you put them um figure out how to get roms you know on your own i'm not gonna say anything like that and then you can hit use this folder. And then you hit allow. And then once you have the location picked, you hit sync. And as you can see, it is syncing and adding every single Super Nintendo game. I'm just going to put it down for a second and let it finish. So I think it's imported all of my Super Nintendo games. So if we go to the library, as you can see, all of the games are there. And currently, it is automatically scraping the images. So it is automatically downloading the pictures for each and every one of these games. So... That's what this is right here. It's automatically downloading those pictures. And depending on what theme you're using, I think it might use different pictures. But for every system and every game, it does this automatically. So as you can see, now we have cover art that is scraped automatically. Some games have it and some don't. But it looks like most of them are there. As you can see, like F-Zero doesn't yet. But it just downloads all of that automatically. And that's the great part about Daiji Show. You simply stick your games in there. And then it gives you this console-like experience. You can have your battery meter at the top. And you can just go through your library. And it just puts all the pictures just as if it was a, you know, normal handheld. Now, as far as opening a game, let's just pick Earthbound here. So, for example, if I want SNES on SNES 9X, the RetroArch, we'll have to select that. And then switch to RetroArch. So, once you're in RetroArch, you hit Load Core. And as you can see, we don't have the exact core that I selected in Daiji Show, so you hit download core. 
and for whatever system and for whatever emulator that you chose you simply scroll until you see it so SNES 9x that one All right now it's installed so let's switch back to Daiji show and as you can see Earthbound is now opening on the RetroArch Super Nintendo emulator. So now if you look, you're completely out of Daiji Show, which I accidentally closed it, but now you're completely in RetroArch. So let's just pick a different game. For example, Mega Man. And it just opens up Mega Man. So my take on this is if you have a old Android phone lying around or you want to buy Android phone exactly for this purpose, this is one of the cheapest ways to get one of the fastest portable emulators. And not to mention that phone batteries are quite large. So you will have to configure the controller in RetroArch if that's the one that you use because obviously the buttons don't work. You got to use the touch controls. So that is one small issue. And that is one thing that I dislike about Daiji Show. If you close the game, if you're using RetroArch, you stay in RetroArch. You have to manually go back. Maybe that's just because I set something up differently. Um, drop a comment if you know how to fix that. But yeah, that is how you set up Daiji Show on your Android device, which I think personally is the best emulator front end if you want to play retro games or just emulate titles on your phone. And for example, if I wanted to play my NES games as well as my SNES games, you'd simply follow the same process of adding the path and it would automatically scrape for all the pictures and do all this just like it did on the Super Nintendo. Same process for every system, you just have to do it for every system. So thank you guys for watching, I hope that you got something from this, and I'll catch you in the next one. That's all for me, I'm out, peace.